I'm Walter Isaacson of the Aspen Institute. I'm here with best-selling author Cokie Roberts, and we're talking about the women in early America. After the revolution, the expansion of America begins. What is the role of women then? Well, of course, women were playing very hard roles in many cases because they were pioneers and having to move west under difficult circumstances. But one of the things that happened with the expansion was that the United States acquired Louisiana and thereby met a group of remarkable women who were already here. The Ursuline nuns had come to New Orleans in 1727. They had been sent by the bishop to open military hospitals for the French uh, colonialists in, in Louisiana. And they immediately saw the need around them to do more than that. So they started a free school for girls. They took in, in that period, that early in the century, they took in free blacks and Native Americans. They started to take care of these women called the Fille de Cassette, who were sent over to be wives to the French men. Now, this is a, a situation just rife with abuse. Now, by the way, Fille de Cassette, explain in English, that well, means that they have? They had little cassettes, little baskets. Yeah, um, they came over they with baskets. Baskets that they were sent on the boat with, uh, to, which was all their worldly possessions. And they'd get off the boat, and they apparently were sent below, so they'd get off so pale that people thought they were ghosts. And there they were, you know, in a situation where any man could grab them, and they had no ability to protect themselves. And so the Ursuline nuns. And so the nuns started protecting them and making sure the men paid attention and all of that. So once again, we see women helping uh, create a social safety Absolutely. net, social services. And they also, though, there was one woman in particular in this expansion west who was very instrumental in helping map it. And that was uh, Sacagawea. I'm not sure how to pronounce it because I don't speak Mandan. But she was a young Indian girl when Lewis and Clark got the assignment from Thomas Jefferson to go find out what was in this territory that, uh, that the United States had just purchased. And they met up with her in what would now be North Dakota. And she was 15 years old. And she was married to this total ne'er-do-well Frenchman. She had a baby. Uh, they waited and helped deliver the baby. And then with a the brand new baby, off she sets uh, with them to go west and try to map the territory. And she's a teenage kid with a brand new baby, but she's the person who really knows the territory. And she also knows how to forage for food and teach them how to do it. And what's so wonderful, Walter, is their journals become so admiring of her as time progresses. And of course, they kept wonderful journals. And so at first they just think, well, isn't she nice, you know? Mm -hmm. But then they say, she's the one who, who found the food. She's the one who found the root. She's the one who was brave through the boats all getting smashed. You know, and then they finally get out to Wyoming, Montana, and and she had been kidnapped as a child from one Indian tribe, and there was her brother, who was the chief of the tribe. And that protected, first of all, it was a very moving scene, mm -hmm. but secondly, that protected them. And so then they started putting her out front every place they went, and, and the combination of the fact that she was a woman and a native meant that they were protected by her. And then finally they get to, finally, they get to the West Coast and the men go out to actually see the ocean. And she was left behind and she was furious. And she said, this isn't fair. I've taken this whole trip with you. And, uh, and they said, you're right. And so she went and saw the ocean. And then she really got them back. And, uh, and Clark raised her child. I, I think actually that they were in love with each other. But she was the person who really knew how to, how to find the way and how to keep everybody alive. And they came to admire her greatly and felt that she was not adequately compensated uh, for what she had done. They so she becomes that. a great symbol of pioneering women, right. but also the multicultural That's strand right. in American life. Well, of course, the Louisiana Purchase really was the beginning of multiculturalism in America. 
because, of course, New Orleans was a French and Spanish city, and uh, St. Louis was a French city, and then a German city. So you started to have, from what was primarily an English and some degree Dutch and Huguenot East Coast, moving west and absorbing all of these other cultures, and uh, that was really the beginning of it. It was our hometown of New Orleans. <laughs> <laughs> right. And of course, Native Americans like Sacagawea. Right. Thank you very much, Kogi.